ever stumble across a story and think, wait a minute, what if there's more to this? Like, what if they're not telling us everything? Yeah, like those mysteries that just stick with you, you know? Exactly. And today, we're diving deep into one of those head scratchers. The Kecksburg Incident of 1965. Oh, this one's a classic. The stuff of legends. Yeah. We're talking fiery skies. A small town Pennsylvania evening turned totally upside down. And enough whispers of a government cover-up to make even the biggest skeptic raise an eyebrow. Oh, absolutely. But here's the thing about this one. It's not just blurry photos and campfire stories. Right, there's actual substance to this. We're going through declassified documents, eyewitness accounts that'll make your jaw drop. And theories, oh boy, the theories. They range from the plausible. To the downright bizarre. You got it. So for anyone new to this whole saga, let's set the scene. Okay, so imagine this. December 9th, 1965, Kecksburg, Pennsylvania. Probably about as peaceful as it gets, right? Not exactly. Yeah. Picture this. Multiple people report seeing something streaking across the sky, this fiery trail in its wake, before it crashes down in the woods near town. Wow. Not your typical Friday Night Lights. So what were people saying? What were the initial reports? I mean, it was total chaos. Some thought it was a plane crash, others a meteor, but everyone agreed. This was not ordinary. Understandably so. So authorities rush to the scene, but here's where it gets really interesting. The military shows up almost immediately. Like they locked the whole area down before most locals could even grab their cameras. Okay, well that's a little strange, but maybe standard procedure for a potential crash site, you know, just in case. You'd think so, right? <laughs> but eyewitnesses described it as a full-blown military operation. We're not talking a few guys in Jeeps here. People reported seeing a huge sheet acorn shaped yeah. something being loaded onto a flatbed truck under tight security. Okay, see, now that's where the case closed explanation starts to crumble a little bit. Right. Nothing says just a routine incident like armed guards and whispers of giant acorns. So we've got confused townsfolk, a heavy military presence. What's the official word on all this? What did the government say caused this commotion in Kecksburg? Hold on to your tinfoil hats for this one, because their initial explanation was a downed Soviet satellite. Get a satellite! Seriously! That was their story. You think if it was that simple, they wouldn't need to call in the whole darn army, right? Honestly. I'm guessing the locals weren't exactly buying it. You're catching up. See, a satellite, even one breaking up on re-entry, it doesn't really match the descriptions of a large, glowing, acorn-shaped object. And that's what's so fascinating about this case. It's that clash between a very simple explanation and the much messier reality that those folks on the ground actually witnessed. It's like that age-old question, do you believe your lying eyes or the official statement? Hmm. So if the government story doesn't quite add up, what are some of the other theories people have come up with? I mean, this is where it gets really interesting, right? Oh, get ready for a wild ride. It really is, because we're talking everything from secret government projects to, well, things a little more out there. Okay, you've got to give me the rundown. We're talking runaway weather balloons top secret spy planes, or are we going full X-Files here? I'd say we're definitely dipping our toes into X-Files territory. <laughs> um, so on the more, shall we say, grounded end of the spectrum, you've got folks who believe it was indeed a secret government project. Right. Makes sense. Like maybe an experimental aircraft that, you know, maybe didn't go quite according to plan, hence the need for a quick cover-up. Makes sense to me. If I were testing out, like, a top-secret flying acorn, I wouldn't want everyone knowing about it either. Exactly. But um, I'm guessing some people took it a step further than just a crashed experimental aircraft. Oh, absolutely. And that's where we get into, well, the extraterrestrial theories. Of course. It wouldn't be a UFO conversation without aliens. Right. And you can see why this one took hold. Fiery object falls from the sky, shaped like nothing anyone's ever seen, covered in weird markings. Yeah, that's giving alien spaceship for sure. Did anyone actually say they saw a little green men, like in the official reports? You'd be surprised. Well, we don't have any credible reports of actual aliens. There are a lot of eyewitnesses who described seeing these really strange symbols on the object. Interesting. Some even compared them to hieroglyphics, which just adds another whole layer to this whole thing. Hieroglyphics? Okay, now that's just showing off. If I were staging an elaborate hoax, I wouldn't even think to throw in ancient Egyptian writing. <laughs> but all right, so we've got government cover-up, we've got aliens, anything else? What other explanations are people throwing out there? Believe it or not, there's one more we should touch on. Mm. And uh, it's a bit of a doozy. Some folks believe that what landed in Kecksburg wasn't from 
this world exactly okay okay i think i know where you're going with this we're venturing into like time travel territory now is that what you're saying you got it there's a theory that what we're dealing with is actually a crashed nazi weapon from world war ii like some kind of experimental technology that you know the u.s and the soviets were both trying to get their hands on okay that's wild but it does make you wonder like what if there's more to those stories of you know, hidden Nazi technology. It's like something straight out of an Indiana Jones movie. Right. And that's what's so interesting about the Kecksburg incident. It becomes this blank canvas for speculation because you're working with like these real events, but then you have this huge element of the unknown. Totally. But even with all the theories, it's important to remember there are real people in a real town whose lives were completely changed by this. Absolutely. It makes you think how you would even react in that situation. One minute you're just going about your day, the next there's like a possible spaceship in the woods down the road, right. just another Tuesday. And that brings us to the lasting impact of the Kecksburg incident. Because this wasn't just a, you know, blip on the radar for the town. It really became a part of their like their identity. Okay, so did Kecksburg become the UFO capital of the world? Did they erect a giant metal acorn in the town square? Pretty much. <laughs> it attracted all these UFO enthusiasts, all these researchers. They even started an annual UFO festival. Oh, wow. Which, you've got to admire that kind of ingenuity, turning this strange event into a claim to fame. Absolutely. But for some residents, it wasn't all, you know, alien-themed T-shirts and spaceship souvenirs. There was a real sense of unease. Yeah. Like, they wanted answers that they never got. That lingering mystery, right? Did anyone ever come forward with, like, definitive proof? Did the government ever try to address these theories in a more convincing way? Well, they tried, but not in a way that really satisfied everyone. So decades later, in 2005, NASA actually released a statement about the Kecksburg incident. Oh, wow. Okay. They were hoping to put all these rumors to rest. And did they finally admit to the top secret flying acorn program? Not quite. They stuck to their original story. Oh, come on. I mean, they had evidence that it was just a Russian spacecraft that had re-entered the atmosphere around that time. So, no change in tune, even after all those years. Yeah. What did the people of Kecksburg think about that? I can imagine. After all that, I'd be pretty skeptical, too. It's like, okay, NASA, that's what you said the first time around. Right. It's like, show me something. Exactly. So, no smoking ray gun, no signed confession from the Kremlin. What exactly did NASA offer as proof? Well, they claim to have this, you know, evidence that a Russian spacecraft had re-entered the atmosphere and it just happened to land near Kecksburg around the same time. Happened to land. That's awfully convenient. But did they at least produce this evidence? Show some of the blurry photos of space debris with Cyrillic writing all over it? That's the thing. They didn't. There wasn't any, like, concrete proof released to the public. No photos of satellite debris. No recovered pieces of metal with burn marks. No sheepishly grinning cosmonaut saying, oops, sorry about that, our bad. So basically, they were just hoping people would take their word for it, which, after all this time and all these theories, seems like a pretty big ask, don't you think? I'd say so. So where does this leave us? What's the takeaway from this whole saga of, you know, strange lights, government secrecy, and small-town intrigue? What can our listeners, you know, glean from all of this? For me, the Keeksburg incident, it's not just about UFOs or even government cover-ups. It's about how powerful a good mystery can be, like how it can capture our imagination, you know, for decades and make us question what we think we know. And maybe make us a little more skeptical of those official reports, too. Exactly. It makes you think about all the information that's out there, all the stories we hear and how important it is to, you know, to keep asking questions, keep digging for the truth, even if that truth is a little stranger than we expect or a lot stranger in this case. Absolutely. And hey, sometimes the best mysteries are the ones without those easy answers, right? Maybe so. And who knows, maybe someday the full story of what happened in Kingsburg will finally come to light. But until then, it's a good reminder to keep our eyes on the skies and our minds open to the possibilities. You know what they say the truth is out there. And for our listeners who want to explore the Kecksburg incident further, we've got links to declassified documents, eyewitness accounts, and even some of those wilder theories on our website. Happy researching.